I'm Soledad O'Brien, and you're watching Valerie TV. Good, good evening, uh, Soledad. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Wow, it's, this is a grand tour. Uh, yeah, it's been a, a big night for our launch for the very first stop for the Latino in America tour. It was a great night, great questions, great panelists. So it really felt like I think we did a very good job covering the Latino community in a kind of 360 degree way. Um, in terms of getting a panel like this together, what is the process for you? Oh gosh, well, you know, I think you find the right people who you know have have great histories and interesting things to say. I've known Joe Greer for a really long time. I've known um, Jorge Placencia, um, obviously uh, Gabby Moreno, I, I met the other day, and she's so talented. She just seemed like someone would be wonderful to bring out to an audience. So I think, um, I just think you try to pull together this, the smartest, best people you know and see if, you know, especially here in Miami, there's so many folks to, to really to pick from. Um, you know, and we were lucky that they said yes. I am Latino of America. It's been, it's been a huge success. And uh, you, you, uh, that particular brand can come from what you waved back when you were with CNN, which was a fabulous uh, setup that you had with them. And uh, how do you move on from this? How do you progress? And then how did you bring it from one step to the next step? You know, I think it was very, I think it was a very organic process to bring Latino in America, the documentary series we were doing at CNN, to I Am Latino in America, the tour. We do a similar thing with our documentary series, Black in America, where we take um, issues and bring them to the public because they're relevant and important, especially now when we're on the cusp of an election year. There's so much to talk about. Um, in the Latino community, uh, in, in all communities, but especially in a voting year. So, um, you know, I, I think it has been a really successful franchise, and I think it's been a great opportunity to tell a lot of the untold stories about Latinos in this country <coughs> that are often missed. Consider with the current atmosphere in, the, in this political uh, time of the year, how you think Latino have to do to get their voice here? And if, that, if they're not being here, consider all, with all the rhetoric that's taking place, how, what do you see it as a seasoned journalist and how, how should that approach be? Yeah, it's kind of an angry time, I think. And I think the way to get your voice heard is to make sure you're using your voice. And I think the best way to use your voice is to vote. Um, one thing, one statistic that's incredibly disturbing is that of the, of the people who could vote, only 48% of Latinos do vote. It's, it's really problematic um, because we have such a large population and there's so many issues that really impact the Latino population. I mean, impact all Americans, obviously, but, but I think education, if you look at the number of Latino children who are in public education, so any policy around education is really affecting Latino kids. You know, so if you don't vote, you sort of lose your opportunity to affect that. Um, so I think that's the best way to leverage your voice. It can't just be, well, there are lots of Latinos, and there are more Latinos in the fastest growing demographic. It has to be fastest growing demographic voting and leveraging their voice. You know, there was a lot of topic discussed uh, today uh, in the panel. And uh, where is the fine line? Do you think there's a fine line that the Latino community have to walk in order not to cross the infringement of being in inclusive as well as being exclusive because I find that the, there are times that you encounter certain prospect of uh, people and, and they're like, oh, if you don't speak Spanish, then you need, uh, is that a walk, a, a, a fine line that needs to be walked? No, I don't think so. I actually think that um, Latinos are incredibly inclusive mm. and, and I think it's a community that welcomes a lot of voices. There's so much diversity in the Latino community. I mean, you know, Latinos have roots in 21 countries, so El Salvadorans are very different than Mexicans, are very different than Guatemalans, are very different than Hondurans, are very different than Mexicans, and yet there is something that unites the population. So, so no, I, I don't think it's exclusive. I think that it really is about figuring out ways to make, as Dr. Joe Greer said on our panel, make the world better for everybody, everybody, whether they're Latino or not. Policies that help Latinos are policies that can help all Americans, you know, kind of raise a level of education, of income, of health in this country. Uh, and the current recent um, dilemma that's been happening throughout the country, the shooting, the death, and uh, uh, in, in terms of um, the, po the police, and how do you see people of color 
move on in being able to communicate with um, protect and serve and then where do we where did the line draw where do we have to draw that line people of color will continue to do as they've always done which is Americans uh, and African Americans and Latino Americans and Asian Americans even when they find some of the policies challenging in America are very good citizens and very proud Americans um, just because there's something in the country that you want to fix or change doesn't mean you don't love your country and so we'll continue on loving the country and pushing to make the country even better for the least of the citizens who really deserve better protections under the law in many cases. Nah. We did the last question because I, I gotta go to this Yeah, where do Salida, but where do you go from there? Well, you know, today's the first stop, so where we literally go is off to Texas to take our, uh, our Latino and America tour. Uh, we continue on to our second stop, and then I think um, we'll continue telling stories because I, I think our company's motto and focus is all about telling stories of communities that don't get told, not the cliched, typical immigration story over and over again, but the stories about nuance that make a community great. I think we can tell those stories, and I think people want to hear them. Thank you very much for spending the time with me. Thank you. Hey, I'm Soledad O'Brien, and you're watching BTV.